I kept you waiting, didn't I? But we're here. It's time. I'm making another attempt at the custom High Fleet campaign. So just a little bit of quick background for those of you that are new. High Fleet is an incredible game, a mix of strategy and very intense arcade tactical combat. It is one of the most amazing games I've ever played. And I've done two playthroughs of it on my channel, had a lot of fun with it. But after I finished my last hard mode playthrough, I thought, you know what, I could do it with a bigger challenge. So I got my community to design replacement ships for every ship that is in the game. I then got the community to vote among themselves as to which ship for each category they liked the most, and then I put them all into the game. And what I discovered was a group of ships that, for the most part, had been designed from the ground off to attempt to defeat my strategy for completing this game, which is to kind of play it like a World War II submarine simulator, where I do not let the enemy know where I am, I attack them for at long range with airstrikes and missile strikes, and I cruise northwards to Kiva, which is far, far, like 20,000 kilometers to the north, which is our final destination. And I accepted that challenge on the nose, and I attempted to beat this campaign loud. And if you look back through my channel archives, there is a short campaign from about six months ago where I built bad battleships and attempted to do this the, the good way, uh, by not hiding or using stealth and just going all guns blazing. And it resulted in one of the worst experiences I've had in my life. I got absolutely destroyed. Since then, I have been brewing, I have been studying, I have been practicing, I have been designing, and I have been testing. I... No, it seems like I haven't been playing High Fleet in the this time. I have been playing a lot of High Fleet in this time. And I finally have a fleet composition that... Look, I'm not going to say I'm going to win the game with this fleet composition, but I'm definitely going to make a damn good attempt at it. It's taken a lot of work to get to where I am. And you're going to see some ships that don't look optimum and don't look like what you would maybe take into this campaign. I really want to stress that I have worked very hard to put this together, and the decisions that I've made I'll explain, and I'd like you to reserve judgment until you see it in action. So what is the strategy here? Well, I'm actually going to play this the way I played High Fleet Campaign 1 and High Fleet Campaign 2. We are going stealth mode. But first, how could you go stealth mode when the enemies have radar and they have IRST and they have all this? The game actually lets you stealth attack ships that have these sensors. You just have to build them within very, very strict constraints. And I've done that. What I've done is I've designed a fleet of ships that are undetectable by radar and by IRST. And we're going to use these to surprise attack these doom garrisons over and over again to clear a path for our flagships to make it all the way to Kiva. So here's our fleet. I have a core three ships, a three heavy cruisers that are going to be the protection and the main movement of Mark Saiedi, the main character who has to make it to Kiva alive. Now, my original mandate was for these to have a top speed of 300 kilometers per hour. I didn't quite make that with everything I wanted them to have. They actually have, these ones have a top speed of 271 kilometers per hour, which is good. Um, the escort heavy cruisers, the RS Victory and the RS Warrior, uh, relations to any, um, real ships, living or dead, is purely coincidental. Um, they have seven KH-15 missiles. And these are mostly for a, a plan I have for dealing with um, strike groups if we need to. And they are also equipped with eight T-7 multi-purpose fighters. Their main job for these will be interception if required. Hopefully they never get to take off in a defensive role. They may get used in an offensive role. We'll see how it goes. Now, the ship that Mark Saiedi is in and our flagship is the RS Eminent Domain. It is the same design of ship with a little bit more armor, slightly higher top speed, and a vast inventory of R9 sprints to go with its 10 um, AK-725 vimples. And also, you would have noticed that Royer and the Victory also have the heavy amount of anti-aircraft fire. In my testing, what I've discovered is that the 37 millimeter doesn't load fast enough and doesn't have enough range to deal with the sheer amount of aircraft that come at us if we get detected. I've seen airstrikes of like tw like nearly 20 planes coming at me and you can't deal with that with 37 millimeter. You have to use the Vimples. It's the only thing that has enough range and you can see how these ships are built. There's like protection upwards and that's my attempt to deal with that. So that's my defensive and movement area of the fleet. We've got these big, heavy ships with decent amounts of fuel that can make it a pretty good distance. The offensive part of the fleet is made up of all of these little ships here. And the main part of that are 
the Corvettes. So this is hit the Hitman. I've got them set up into teams. It'll make sense in a minute. But this is Hitman 1. Hitman 1 is a completely undetectable Corvette to enemy sensors. They can't detect it on radar. They can't detect it with infrared. They can't detect it with search radar. It will hit a garrison and surprise it every time. In order to do that, however, I have had to build this ship to the absolute limit. Um, I can't really explain to you how hard it has been to hit upon the exact design that doesn't hit 100-100. The rules seem a little bit funky, but this ship does it. It is underpowered. Uh, so you can see there it only has 6 megawatts of power, which is 92% of its requirements. What this means is the turrets don't track properly. And if I am flipping around and flying, they will miss and they will fire in right directions nowhere near where my cursor is. I can fix this, there is a quirk, by thrusting upwards gently. If I just tap W on the keyboard, the guns will align correctly. So you'll probably see me just doing little taps up while I'm firing. And this is how the ship works. It, all it has are two mollets and it has a flare. The fleets we'll be setting out will be made up of two of these ships. They'll, they'll tag each other in as they take damage. The idea is for them to take superficial damage and be able to repair without landing. And we can do that and I've tested it and it works. Now, what you may be thinking is, hang on a second for us. Like I've seen the ships that got voted for. I know what they're like. I know what that gladiator's like. I know what that Sarma's like. I know what that Intrepid's like. These ships are tough and they're heavily armored. These ships here are not gonna be able to take them on on their own. And that's correct. So we have a third ship that joins the fleet. And that is the Missile Corvette. Again, done a lot of testing. I know the ships that we're dealing with have sprints, but what a lot of you have done is you've given them one or two missile tracking. And if I space the missiles out, most of them tend to get through. And this ship will join all of my attack fleets and its job is going to be to crack those heavy ships before they take off. And then we swap in to the, the Corvettes. That's the plan. It might not always go to plan, which is why I have four teams. That's how it's going to work. Obviously, keeping these guys refueled and rearmed is going to be pretty tricky, but we'll get there. Then each fleet will have two tankers. This is just a cute little tanker ship I built. It doesn't really do anything, etc. It's fast. It carries a lot of fuel. We're good. And then we have our AWACS. Um, these will escort each fleet. They've got uh, an Elan sensor. They've got a radar, and they've got a radar jammer. Um, obviously, the range on it isn't huge. It doesn't need to be huge. And uh, they are part of my support package and my contingency plan if we do get detected because i have mostly developed a way to get away from the enemy if they find out where we are so we can go back to being stealthy and the AWACS aircraft are part of that plan so we may as well get started on the campaign the first thing we're going to do is grab supplies i'm going to top out on fuel and air because we can sit here for a while and refuel and that gets us enough fuel to get to uk Akudu fuel storage, which is our next destination I want to get our heavy ships to. We'll probably pass through Nimrod on the way, though. Um, and there's things I want to pick up. All of our ships use 130mm ammo, so I'm going to grab all of this proximity fuse. And I'm also going to grab all of this laser guided. We've got a lot of cash. That's one of the things I'm letting myself do is I'm going into this with a lot of money. We're also going to grab all of this incendiary because it's actually really good against some of the ships that you've built. So we've got quite a lot of 130mm ammo going into this. Um, 120mm rockets are actually a quite a good pickup. I'm not going to pick those up just now. I mean, how much is that going to cost me? 190 rockets is going to cost me about 10 grand. If I do, basically, if I'm going to be calling in airstrikes with my planes, I will be using rockets to do it. I wasn't really planning on picking them up so soon, but this is a pretty good cache of rockets, and I can sell them later if I'm not going to use them. So we may as well just pick them up. Okay, let's get the campaign going, and let's see how we go. Now... We're going to hit Ashad, we're going to hit Nimrod, we're going to hit Ashkelon, and we're going to hit Abed all at the same time. So let's pick up Hitman team. Now, the other thing I want to mention while I'm putting these teams together is you'll notice they've got pretty generic names at the moment. Hitman, Eagle, Assassin. If you can, you should be able to get the references I'm making with these names. Um, what I will say is that all of these ships are definitely capable of picking up real names as the campaign proceeds. These are just the call signs so I can take them apart at the start. So if you think an aircraft has done something worthy of giving it a call sign, let me know in the comments and we will give it that call sign for the rest of the campaign. Let me just put these together. The assassin group gets Galaxy as their AWACS. Uh, we don't need to give them that much fuel. Enough to get to Nimrod. Then we've got the K9 team. And K9 team will, of course, get IT as their AWACS. You should get that reference, hopefully. We'll give them a little bit more fuel. And then finally, we have Crimson Team and Crimson Get Vita as their AWACS. And there's a reference that I don't know how many people will get, but it is a reference. It is a Project Wingman reference. Okay, that is all four of our groups in the air. I need to make sure their radars are turned off, which it looks like they are, which is great, because we don't want our radars on when we approach the enemy. 
I will be turning radar on when we land, because the worst thing that could happen, the actual game change, like the game ending disaster, is that now, do you have enough fuel now that you've taken off? I was worried that you wouldn't, and it looks like you don't. That is annoying. Um, it definitely had enough fuel before takeoff, but takeoff eats so much fuel. So we're actually going to revert Hitman team back to base, and they're probably going to hit Urdu or Shubat in low. That's fine. And what I'll do actually is I'll get them to follow on to Nimrod, and they will they will jump off from Nimrod. Um, but if we run into an enemy uh, trade group, that is actually going to be a disaster. So we need to know if an enemy trade group is coming into the city before we hit it. And that's why we're going to sit on the ground with our radar turned on. Our radar isn't long enough range for them to work out where we are. And the enemy won't investigate elant signals unless there is a, an alarm in the air. Because they are giving off elant signals all the time. Um, so you're actually okay to have radar running if there's no alarm in place. If there's an alarm in place, they will investigate elant. But we're pretty chill without it. So we're going to get our first engagement in Nimrod here. Um, you can see that uh, probably any second now we're going to get shouted at by um, Pyotr. Actually, I think because I've got the group selected, he's not going to shout at us. But we, we've we got Danger Elant happening over here. Let's see what we've got in the garrison. And you'll see that there is not even a chance of them detecting us. They're not even going to have a bar. We're just going to fly in. Oh, they do have a bar this time. It might be because I've got two fleets close together. We're still going to hit them before they can raise the alarm. Okay, first garrison of the campaign. We're dealing with a Nimrod, a Courageous, and a Navarin. We do not need to worry about using our Assassin 3 for this. So Assassin 1 and Assassin 2 will deal with this garrison pretty easily. Now, as always, I am not the best at shooting at grounded targets, so I'll just be doing some pot shots until they get into the air. The Courageous here is actually a bit is actually quite annoying. It's quite dangerous. So we're just gonna hover and shoot at it. And I will be not speaking too much during combat because we know what I'm like when I talk. And then we're going to deal with the Nimrod next. And just dodge that 37mm fire, because it is actually quite dangerous to these ships. Oh, I just shot a... I have noticed that the... Um... Uh, what was that ship? They do sometimes explode like that when they launch their last aircraft. Uh, which we never noticed last time we played this campaign, because they never had any aircraft when they were in the garrison. We'll just dodge left here. He's almost down. This is a pretty easy garrison. And that's one win for Assassin Team. Took a tiny amount of damage. No enemy alarm was raised. That's a pretty good start for us. And we actually get some level ups for our, our teams here because we're dealing with superior odds. Huge problem with the campaign last time was I couldn't actually get any experience on my aircraft because they were so much more expensive than their targets. That's not the case this time. We're going to pick up Royal Guard here. It's one of the best uh, talents, especially for, for a rapid attack team like this. It's okay, Dowd and Pyotr. I know what I'm doing. I hope. Right. Um, we can actually grab a T7 here, which is an unreal um, find. I also really want to search for survivors, but I think getting a T7 is a greater find than uh, survivors right now. And there's the, the Elan tutorial from Pyotr. That's all good. What we'll do is we'll land Assassin team and we'll steal all the fuel from the other team. Okay, we're going to get another fight in Ashkelon in a second. And we don't actually have an Elant warning on the team going into Abed, which is very interesting. It means that whatever's here doesn't actually have radar, which is very rare in this version of the game. Uh, there we go. So whatever is here has uh, very limited radar. Probably only a fire control radar, judging by the ring. Um, and if you see here on us, our approach to Ashkelon, you'll notice that we get in well before they can raise the alarm. So there's not even an alarm being raised. There it is there. We got tons of time to get in. Uh, we managed to rescue that T7. I'm going to grab the survivors here. I don't want to get the morale failure. Um, we also have a radio signal coming in. Let's find out what this is, because this can tell us where a trade fleet is, and that's pretty important. Oh, we got into a battle while I was decoding that radio. That happens to me all the time. I forget the game on pauses. Oh, this is a super easy garrison, just a courageous and a Navarin. Um, we'll just deal with this really quickly. Just want to basically deal with the uh, courageous as fast as possible. A little bit high with those shots. We'll just... Oh, I took a hit that I really didn't need to. Don't worry, things will get a lot more tense as the campaign continues. This is just our opening act. And you can see that so far my strategy is is working pretty well. And now we can just deal with the Navarin. And the Navarin just blew its rear end off. And that's a kill because we hit the gas tank. Not made for tactical combat, the Navarin, so I'm not worried if it sometimes self-destructs when it launches aircraft. That's another win for us. And we even got a little bit of experience, but not a lot. We could actually grab another T7. This is, this is amazing luck. Okay, and then we've got... Uh, so everyone he is here, actually. We should be doing something about this. Let's pause the game. 
and let's get Hitman team back in the air. So we'll get Hitman, Hitman, um, Perez, Hitman, Hitman, Hitman. Um, how much fuel can we grab here? Um, we've got enough to get onto Ukudu, so we're actually going to send them. Mm, I really want to get them further than that. Well, there's obviously just not enough fuel here at the moment, so we'll just wait till there's more fuel available. Let's see if I can decode this again before. Yes, uh, Peter, I, I know, what, know what I'm doing. Yeah, Peter. I need to do this again, unfortunately. Is it forward a bit? Somewhere here. Ugh, into another battle before I've decoded it. That's okay. Uh, another very easy. The Slogger is actually a pretty scary aircraft. Uh, you can notice it's got two uh, Vimples and an AK-100. It is our priority target here. I don't need to use any special ammo or anything. Garrisons will get tougher. I promise. No, 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 no real tension at the start of the campaign, but, you know, things will get harder. Just can't be complacent, though. Complacency will kill. Overconfidence is a slow and, what is it, slow and insidious killer. You can see what I mean about the tracking on the turrets not being great. They also don't have a lot of fuel, these ships. I just dodged, almost dodged into that because um, I need to remember that my flares fly off to the top left of my aircraft. Let's try not to take too much 57mm fire. Or 100mm fire, for that matter. Ouch. What I want to do here is I'm actually going to just fire off into the barrage. That was a great explosion, and we're going to pull Crimson 1 out of this combat. And we'll deploy Crimson 2. Who's nice and fresh. Get a little bit of experience. And not worry about building too much damage on our aircraft. Looks like he took a hit as well from something. I think he's on fire. Not doing great on hitting him at range though, which is just... There we go. And that's another easy win. And that's another garrison taken. And we're looking for Tarkans. That's one of the main reasons I'm spreading out like this. Looking for Tarkans, looking for places to resupply and refuel. Sprints available here, four of them. We're definitely going to grab those. We've got fuel tanks. No need to worry about grabbing um, survivors. So let's start by grabbing these sprints. We rescued two people here. Let's get the fuel tanks rescued next. We've already taken three locations, and it is 6 a.m. on the first day. Uh, let's grab the fuel tanks, and then we'll go for the captain's quarters to see if we can locate some Tarkans. Hopefully, Omar's in Nimrod or Ascalon. We'll get hold of him pretty quickly. We can probably sell his ship without too much of a problem. Okay, need rescue orders down here. Uh, fuel tanks, Vimple. Let's get the fuel tanks. I'm not too worried about encryption yet, because the enemies won't encrypt until they know we're coming. Uh, 800 fuel is now available here, which is great. Let's search the crew cabins for something to give to a Tarkan as a gift. We've got another one here. I'm going to... What's the MR2M worth? 1,000. Let's search the captain's cabin. Oh, one thing I've forgotten to do. I need to turn my radar on when we are scavenging and landed because we do not want to be surprised by a trade fleet. Trade fleet, like I mentioned, it is the worst case scenario if a trade fleet just wanders into us. It's really, really bad luck. I should be excited we haven't hit a trade fleet already. In testing, I've hit a trade fleet a couple times. We might as well search the radio room because there's nothing else to search. And we've got a gold elephant, which is great. Okay, let's check if Hitman team can now make it to their target. With the extra fuel we've picked up. Not quite. Um... I don't think that is 100% fuel. No, it's not. It's only 70% fuel. So we just need to wait for a little bit more refueling. But let's see what's going on in the town. Okay, we don't have. We do have a tar can. Fantastic. Let's check supplies first. Um, I will buy some fuel once we've let once Hitman team have departed. We're definitely going to grab this extra 130 millimeter laser guided. We're also going to grab the, all this prox fuse. We're going to need it. Um, and let's check the ship works because we have some ships to repair. So I think Assassin One is. Fine. No, Assassin 1 took some damage. Nope, Assassin 2 took some damage. Did we not take any damage taking this? Did Hitman... No, I guess we didn't take any damage. I thought we took damage taking this territory. But obviously it was only superficial. Okay, we don't need to repair anything. Um, what we do want to do though is we want to buy any T7s that are here. And we want to buy um, Zeniths. Definitely want to buy as many Zeniths as we can get our hands on. And Sprints as well are high priority. I didn't see any Sprints here. No, there are none. Okay. Uh, let's exit out of here and let's talk to Omar. This is probably going to be Omar. Um, it is Omar. Um, so usually he does not like Romani. So I'm going to say glory to Garrett. 
Um, he's very proud of lame. He likes that. Garrett rolls you plus one. I'm not actually going to play the game with him because as part of the start of the game, I've got the small pot to give him, which makes him instant join us. So let's give him the pot. Um, and that just gives us two stars with him. And he will come with us on the campaign. And he'll tell us about a Tarkan northwest of here. Uh, so we want to pick them up as well. Intrepid Mark II he's given us. I think the Intrepid Mark II is pretty good, but it doesn't really fit our strategy at this stage of the game. Um, yeah, I'm going to sell this. It's not really going to work for us right now. It is not fast enough. Actually, it is fast enough, but it's not stealthy enough for, to work with the fleet. I could have it hang back and act, work as an escort. I'd rather have the cash right now. It's 28 grand. We'll pick up the 28 grand. Thanks, Omar, for the 28 grand. Okay, um, we're just going to wait for a little bit of refueling to happen here, and then we'll send Hitman team off. Um, reports indicate unknown Gar Garati Tarkin in an area far northwest of Ashkelon. You're ordered to increase security patrols. So Ashkelon is here. So we're probably looking at the Gar uh, There's probably someone here, probably in Ukdu. If it's northwest of Ashkelon, northwest of Nimrod, we're probably looking at a Tarkan here. Potentially in Deer, but we're going to check that out with the Hitman team. Let's grab the... I don't want to do... I don't want to risk losing any crew. So one of the things I've done as well as I've overcrewed these fleets, and I believe that means morale will regenerate faster. I'm not certain about that, but I'm pretty sure that is the case. And that should mean they can keep moving a lot faster than we normally have them. Um, oh, we should actually check what's happening uh, because they finished doing their thing. Oh, a lame garb. The city's Doyen approaches you, bowing repeatedly. He presents you with a flowing robe embroidered in gold. Even from afar, you can tell that it is a veritable masterpiece of incredible luxury made with exceptional skill. One of my father's master's tailors made it. Money cannot buy a robe such as this. I wonder how this Doyan got his hands on it. I've not had this event before. Dressing as Garati royalty will impress the Aleems greatly, but the Romani might fight it distasteful. So at the moment, we have already picked up a little bit of Garati worldview, and we have one Romani worldview. Um, I'm not going to sell the robe. I think I'm going to wear it and just see what happens. It's going to drop our popularity by two. Against insulting. Your people against insulting Romani. Hmm. Do I want to stay Romani? This is a decision I've never had to make before. I can't really remember what being pro Garati would really help us. Our men are very Romani at the moment. I'm kind of thinking we're going to go like kindness faith. I think I'm going to wear the clothing. Garati worldview plus two. Romani minus two. Okay, so we just traded. We basically gained plus two Garati from minus one Romani because I can't go negative. And what ships are available for sale here? We've got a Mockingbird. Which is just a tanker. We might actually pick that up. We've got a um, scarab. You can't really look at the equipment down here because I don't think it directly reflects what it has. Although it seems to. Um, the scarab is pretty nice. Good, good escort ship. And then there is the updated Skylark, uh, which is a little bit bigger. Uh, it has an RST. Like two tankers here, which are quite nice to pick up, but I'm not really that worried. Check supplies. Um, let's top out on fuel. It costs us no money. Uh, we've got some 130 minute prox fuse here. We'll definitely grab that. There's also incendiary. We're spending a lot of money, but we need to spend money to make money. I'm not going to worry about armor piercing. I don't like armor piercing ammo. Doesn't work for me. And into the ship works. Does K9 need repairs? No. Nope. Does K92 need repairs? Nope. Game is being very good to us at the moment. Let's exit out of here. Zoom out. And um, well, as soon as they finish re repairing, we can move them on. Um, is the Hitman team ready to go here? Hitman, 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 Prez. Okay. Overfueled for Ashard. Let's send them to Ashard. Make sure they can make it. And what I'm going to do as well is just for Assassin, we're going to then top out their fuel. And as soon as they've got top max fuel, they will be taking off as well. And you get an idea of how this early, the early game is going to go here. And we do have enough fuel to make to Ashard. Good. All right. Great start so far. No huge disasters. Uh, let's make sure that these guys have their radar turned off as they approach Ashad. And nothing's being picked up on radar. We're just waiting for everyone. Have I checked a bed yet? I haven't. Let's jump in here. We do have some repairs to do here. So first things first, let's jump in the shipyard uh, and get Crimson 1 repaired. Um, I don't think Crimson 2 needs any repairs, no. And you can see that even though they can't land, it's going to take two hours to repair the ship, which is nothing. Nothing at all. Um, let's go and check supplies, make sure we're maxed out on fuel. And we have aircraft missiles. These are essential. We have to buy these when we see them. Prox fuse and laser guided 130 millimeter as well. I know I'm spending a lot of money. It will pay off. We could also sell the ammo if we don't need it. In fact, like we could sell the unguided rockets. A lot of my money's tied up in ammunition, but we will be making some money soon. Right. Now we need to work out where your strike group is. 
so nothing down here with us. We've got Strike Group Dune is up here near Resh. There's going to be a problem. And the other thing we're going to spend our money on is Trade Fleets because I need to know where they are. Because if we run into them, that's where we have problems. So there's a trade fleet here heading up to Shubat and Neil. So if I was to send this group up here, we could potentially run into them. We may actually be able to ambush them. 2.2 um, .2 hours. It's going to take them quite... They're pretty slow, 125. I think we're going to head straight to Shubat and Neil after we have finished repairing. And we're going to try and ambush um, that, that, that trade group. That's a pretty good shout for us. Um, you guys have finished refueling. No, you're, you're still refueling. Let's just fast forward a little bit. How are we doing with refueling? 1.6 hours on repairs here. You've almost finished refueling. You're still refueling. We're going to send these guys up to Uma, and then this team is going to go up to Ukdu to prepare it for the main fleet arriving here to re to refuel. They're going to leapfrog Nimrod and just head straight to Ukdu. That's the plan for them. The next, the, our sort of next objective is to get the fleet to Golbagaz here, which is our priority target, and then we're going to take and capture Resht through a long range engagement. Um, using Golbagaz as our base of operations. And I'm hoping there's maybe a hidden city up here. Um, that was just some stuff I was looking at before the campaign started. Okay, this team is ready. Let's send them to Uma. And turn off their radar. Oh, we're just waiting for the Abed team to be together as well. Oh, so good to be playing High Fleet again. I'm having a blast already. Let's just see how we do. For those wondering, yes, I'm playing on normal, not hard. I want to get a normal win before I try getting a hard win. Um, so I probably actually, I have tested a lot of stuff on hard, but it gets wrecked on hard about halfway through, which should be about when we start to um, find the enemy. Let's make sure your radar's turned off. It is good. You have 0 0.3 hours left on repairs. You have almost finished re refueling. Your radar is off too. Yeah, okay. That's all good. You are almost finished repairing. Come on. Repairing done. Radar off. Got a garrison here. It's probably something tiny. And you're all good to go as well. What have we got? Too courageous. We can just easily bat our way through that. I know these are not very exciting garrisons so far. Trust me, this is going to get insane later on. We're just playing through the easy opening of the game right now. The tactical um, threat of these garrisons is not very high. The strategic threat of these garrisons is very high. Just bullying this courageous, which is what you do. In High Fleet, you bury the bully Courageouses, even though these Courageouses are much better than the vanilla ones. Also look a lot better. I think that other Courageous is falling out of the sky right now, so we'll focus our fire on this one. And that's a win for Hitman Team. A little bit of damage on Hitman 1, we'll get that repaired. And that's another Garrison claimed. A little bit more of experience. Uh, what have we got here? We've got an MRM 2M, that's worth 1,000, that's worth 2,000. I really want to search crew cabins. That's a pretty important one. We don't need to worry about saving anybody. Let's get that done first before it has a chance to be destroyed. Um, and then I want to make sure the Nimrod team have their radar turned off. Abed team are on the way. Their radar is turned off. And we're about to hit Numa. All right. This looks like another easy garrison. Oh, we've actually got a flower here. The flower is a little bit scary. So we're going to come in with some prox fuse just to kill the flower because it has a lot of zeniths and I don't want to deal with that. Um, and then we've got two Courageouses. We're not going to use the prox fuse against the Courageouses. It's just going to be used against the flower. Um, and I like this because it feels like um, preparing is paying off, if that makes sense. We'll just launch a flare here. We'll launch another one just to be sure. And then I'm going to fire off a bombardment. You see how long it took for my shots to track around? Let's just fire that off. And we'll just fire off a flare here. And we'll just drop a little bit. And that flower is almost destroyed. One more shot, probably. Maybe one more. That's it. Now we reload back to normal ammo. Dodge the Courageous is 100mm, which is a big threat to these interceptors. Because they are 100% armored. Oh, that was a great shot. Just absolutely wrecked that Courageous. Dodge up. I'm trying to snipe him if I can. Let's just dodge down. Okay, this is a big problem for these ships. They do not have any fuel suppression systems. So when they catch fire, they need to retreat before they explode. And now we get in with um, our second ship. And that is why we have multiple ships. Because we cannot, you cannot fit a fire suppression system on one of these and keep them off the radar. It's pure stealth is why they're built like the way they are. Oh, he just zipping through my shots. Come on. That was a good hit. Actually, you saw him get knocked back by that shot. 
Come on. Okay, he just tapped out. Alright, we're probably, that's probably one of the last easy garrisons we're gonna get. They're gonna get a lot harder from here. Uh, K91 is leveled up. I'm gonna grab, hmm. I'm gonna grab Veteran Pilot here. Everybody's very good, but I need to stay alive. And we're gonna grab the fuel here. And see what our priorities are. As much as my fleet can fuel itself is what I want. Got a gold elephant, which is great. We really need as many gifts as we can. Let's grab the ammo. We might be able to pick up something useful there. And I really will hope the Shubat and Neil group ambush this uh, Sultan trade fleet. Okay, we've got a pretty strong radar um, radar coming from Uktu. If we're hitting Elant from this far away, that means there's a more powerful radar here. Uh, so we could be running into something pretty powerful here, but we'll see. Okay, we've got the fuel over here. Uh, two AK-100s in the captain's cabin. Let's um, get crew protection. If there's anything worth grabbing at that point, we will search for it. I doubt there'll still be anything at that point. Uh, who is do you are looking for the ammo? Uh, captain's cabin, fuel tanks. Let's get the fire control radar. We can sell that. And we're about to hit Shubat and Neil. There's an aircraft carrier group here, but that's probably just the garrison. Again, nothing's raised the alarm yet. We are being completely stealthy. I'm very happy with things, how things are playing out. Oh, such a simple garrison. I'm sorry they're not more exciting, but trust, like, I know I'm saying it, but things will get tenser as this campaign ex goes on. This is just the opening act. I like to just drop down and bombard as much as possible, and then we just float through the shots. There's also just getting these ships experience. Um, so that if we need to rebuild them into something better later on in the campaign, we can. Just gonna wait for our, our guns to align with our cursor, because they will not do that sometimes. Um, let's see if this um, Navarin destroys itself. It didn't. Sometimes they do when they launch that last plane. Oh, there are still two planes on the runway. I'm trying to hit the fuel tank if I can. Ooh, put it in a nasty spin. I think I've taken two of the attitude thrusters off. It's, it's, it is falling. Let's just follow it down. Will it launch that last plane before it hits the ground? I would not like to be on that craft right now. Um, I think I've blown all... No, there's two escape pods. Oh, it's managed to correct itself. I thought it was in a down... Okay. I thought it was in an out-of-control spin. It wasn't. Now it is. Ah, uh, okay. Things are going well so far. Unfortunately, we didn't hit... The trade fleet. So where is the trade fleet? The trade fleet is incoming. Okay, we have to take off straight away and intercept it. We can't afford for it to give an alarm. So we have to go straight for it. How much fuel do we have? We have tons of fuel. Where is the trade fleet? It's just in this direction. Oh wait, something up. Uh, we had a rescue over here complete. Um, let's get the fuel tanks. What else is happening? You're about to arrive in Uktu. Okay, now, this is where things get interesting. We have raised the alarm. So we have two very important things we need to do right now. Number one, the fleet approaching Uktu has to turn around because if they approach this garrison right now, the garrison will raise the alarm and detect their presence. This fleet here, I need to... Fully fuel Vita. Uh, how much fuel does Vita have? Vita has tons of fuel. I need to put it here, and I need to activate the jammer and leave the radar on. So Vita is now going to act as a distraction and a way of forcing the enemy to move in a different direction. And then we're going to get our main fleet. We're going to detach. Um, why have you been renamed to Int 3? One of our Crimson's has been renamed. We're going to detach the Crimson crew, and we're going to send them after this. They will outspeed it like crazy. We're actually also going to send the missile carrier, and they are going to engage the trade fleet. And that is all going to happen in the next video. So, little cliffhanger. I hope you're enjoying this so far. I know it's just been a slow, easy progression, but now things get exciting. Well, <laughs> things get interesting.
because the enemy have raised the alarm. And we need to take things a little bit slower, but we should be okay. This is something I have prepared for and I have a plan in place. If you're enjoying this and you want to see more, please take a moment to like the video, give it a subscribe. It lets me know that this is what you want to see. I've been producing a lot of different content lately. None of it's been doing as well as it normally does. I'm not really that bothered. I'm having fun. But if this is what you really want to see me doing, let me know. Um, apart from that, have a great day. Enjoy your morning, noon, or night, and I'll catch you in the next video. Ciao for now. Welcome back to High Fleet.